Okay, so for this uh, video, we'll be working on um, 2011, October, November, paper 3. Okay, so let's look at question number, word, uh, number one first, right? It says create a new word process document, say this with the file name evidence. This one is very simple. So we just open Microsoft Word. I'm going to select a blank document. I'm going to save as inside my working folder, which is on the desktop. Um, for those of you sitting for the uh, IGCSE ICT paper, please save it in the uh, folder indicated by your uh, invigilator. Right, so I'm going to name this document Evidence, all caps, because that's what the question wants. Save it. Right, let's look at question number two. Place your name, center number, and candidate number in the header of this document. Right, so I'm just going to double click here. Name, Chong Han, center number, whatever center number that you have. Candidate number 6969. Right, moving on to question number three. It says uh, you work for a company called um, Hot House Design. You are going to manipulate a spreadsheet about the performance of athletes in the Javelin as they prepare for the 2012 Olympic Games. So using a suitable software package, load the file n1javelin.csv. Right, so I'm going to go to the folder here, n1javelin.csv. So double click on it. And the first thing you need to do here is to save the CSV file as um, an Excel file, right? Reason being a CSV file is a comma-separated value file. So whatever function, whatever um, formatting or whatever colors or anything else that you put in, if you save it as a CSV file and you open it again, all your configurations will be gone, all right? Because a CSV file is basically just a text file. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. Again, I'm going to save it into my working folder. Instead of CSV here, I'm going to change it to Excel workbook. Right, I'm going to click Save. Right, moving on. Number four, place your name, candidate number, and center number in the header. Right, so insert, header and footer, name, candidate number, and center number. Next question, place the automated file name and file path in the footer. All right, so I'm going to scroll down here under design, um, file name and file path, right? So I'm going to put in path and file. So you will get the entire uh, full qualified file path here. All right, moving on. So, search the internet to find the current Olympic record holders for the men's and women's javelin. These records will be those set after April 1st, 1986, when the type of javelin changed. So, basically what you need to do is you need to go online and search for the Olympic record holders for men and women javelin. Right? So, men. Right, so for each of these uh, records, find the athlete's name, country that they represented, distance thrown in meters with two decimal places, year the record was set, name of the city hosting the Olympic Games in that year. Right, so what you need to do is, after you found it, you need to fill in the cells here for men and women. Right, so. Javelin throw. Andreas Torkilsen. Paste the name here. Country, Norway. Distance in meters, 90.57. Right, so take note not to put in the M for meters here because if you put that in, um, it will be difficult for you to compare uh, with the um, best throw of the athletes listed here. All right, because you can't take an alphanumeric um, data type to compare it with a numeric data type. All right, so let's remove the M. So year 2008, Beijing. 2008, Beijing. 
Right, followed by women. Don't really know how to pronounce this name. Country, Cuba. Again, distance, 71.53. The year, 2004 Athens. 2004 Athens. Oops. Right, we're done. So print only cells A1 to F F4. Make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number are printed in the header of the page. Right? So A1 to F4, right? So highlight this. Go to page layout. Print area. Set print area. So basically, you're telling Excel that, hey, Excel, I just want to print um, this particular selection. All right, so I'm going to go to File, Print, make sure your name, center number, and candidate number appears, and the cells here are actually cells um, A1 to F4. All right, so click Print. Right, number seven. In cell A8, use a lookup function to show the country name in full. Use the code column for the lookup value and the file and one country 2csv for the array. This function must include both absolute and relative referencing, uh, referencing and must not use a name range. So what it wants is based on the code here, NZE, USA, MAL, RSA, BRA, RE, and all, and all that, you need to find out what um, all these code represent from the file called N1 country 2. So I'm going to open this file. Right, then I'm going to switch back to the previous one. Okay, so it says use a lookup function. The function that you're going to use is called VLOOKUP, which actually stands for vertical lookup. Right, so to start a function, I'm going to use equals to VLOOKUP, and then it's going to ask you to put in four values. All right, the first one is the lookup value, followed by a comma, table array, followed by a comma, column index number, followed by a comma, and then range lookup. Right? So, what does lookup value mean? Lookup value means what value I need to find out what it stands for. Say, for example, if I want to find out what NZE means, that means that NZE is actually the lookup value. So, I'm going to select NZE, comma, and it's going to ask you for the table array. So, table array means from where is the additional information coming from. Right? So, I'm going to switch over to N1 country 2 because that's where the additional information is coming from. I'm going to select the entire table here. Let's highlight the entire thing. Another comma. And then it says column index number. Right. So column index number means from which column is the additional data coming from. Now if you look here, column 1 already contains the code. Right. You already know the code. What you need to know is what the code represents, which is in the country column, which is the second column. So. You need to put in column number two. Put in a two, comma, and then it's going to ask you whether the match needs to be approximate or exact. Of course, we need exact. So I'm going to double click on exact, and I'm going to press enter. Right, so NZE stands for New Zealand, USA stands for United States of America, and so on and so forth. Right, so replicate this function so that the country name is shown in full for each athlete. So what you need to do. Select a few handler, double click to apply the function to all the subsequent cells. Done. Moving on to the next question. In cell K8, use a function to select and display the longest of the six throws made by the athlete. So K8. K8. So, if you look here, throw number 1 is 85.02, 73, and then 66, and then 84, and then 55, and then 85. So, basically what a question wants is for you to find out the largest number, right? And the function to find out the largest number is called max, maximum. So, to start a function again, equals to max, open the bracket, it's going to ask you to select numbers, a series of numbers, right? So, I'm going to select all the numbers here, I'm going to close the bracket, I'm going to press enter. So it's going to find the largest number among the six numbers here. Now it says replicate this function so that the best throw is shown for each athlete. Simple. Just need to use the fill handler. Double click on it to replicate it again. 
Right, done. On to the next question. Because athletes sometimes miss a throw or throw outside the area, this is recorded in a spreadsheet as a no throw using the letters NT. Number nine, in cell L8, use a function to add the distance of all the throws for this athlete. Ensure that the function does not include the distance if it is recorded as NT. So basically, you need to add all the, um, all the throws of that particular athlete in except the ones that are labeled as NT. Right, so we're going to use a function called sum equals to sum put in the bracket and we're just going to select the six rows here again you need to apply it to all the subsequent cells just double click on the field handler then question 11 in cell N8, calculate the average throw length for only the throws where distance was recorded. Use the content of cells L8 and M8 to help you. Oh, whoops. I missed out one question. Number 10. In cell M8, use a function to count the numbers of throws that were not recorded as NT. All right, so you just need to count the cells that have numbers and leave out the ones that are alphanumeric. So in order to do that, you use the sum function. So equals to, sorry, count. So equals to count. If you look here, it says count the number of cells in a range that contains numbers, right? So open the bracket, simple, select all the throws. It's just going to leave out those that are labeled as empty anyway. Press enter. Again, use the field handler to apply it. Okay, moving on to the next question. So, again, in cell N8, calculate the average throw length for only throws where distance was recorded. Use the content, uh, contents of cell L8 and M8 to help you. So, total thrown is this, number of throws, 6. So, in order to get the average, you need to take the total, divide by the number of throws, right? So, equals, starting a function, to total thrown, divided, slash, number of throws. Enter. And then it says round this value to one decimal place. So you need to use a function called round. So I'm going to modify the existing uh, function here to include the function called round. So equals to round, put in the bracket, it's going to ask for a number, right? So the number is actually the product of L8 divided by M8. Okay, so I'm going to leave these two here, followed by a comma. It says to one decimal place. So number of digits, I'm going to put it one. And then it says replicate this function so that the average throw length is shown for each athlete. So you're just going to double click on the field handler. And there you have it. Right, next question. In cell 08, use a formula to display the word yes if the athlete's longest throw breaks the Olympic record, or display the word no if it does not. Remember that there are two records, one for men and one for women. Records, records, whatever. So replicate this formula so that it is automatically displayed for each athlete. Okay, now looking at this, um, the function that you should use is a conditional function. It's the if function. All right? So, um, if you want to understand more about the if function, you can click on the link above. If not, you can just move on from this question. All right, so go here. Now let's look at the data here, right? Now, um, the challenging part here is to first identify whether the current athlete is a male or a female, right? Reason why is because once you have identified the gender, you need to compare the best throw of that particular athlete all right, with the correct distance of the records, uh, record holders based on their gender as well. So if it's a male, you need to compare with a male. If it's a female, say for example, Sparkle Brown here, right? You need to compare this with the distance here. All right, so in order for you to do that, you need an if function. Or in this case, two ifs, uh, if functions inside and outer if function, right? So, let's put in um, the function here. So, equals to if, 
right? If you look here, the if function actually requires um, three different values, all right? That's the logical test, that's the value if true, and the value if false. So what this means is the logical test is the one that actually compares um, and needs an outcome of a comparison. For example, if, um, you know, Chong Han's weight is greater than 70, okay? So value if true means if the logical test passed. Say, for example, my weight is 75, right? So, and it says that if Chong Han's weight is larger than 70, which is true, the value if true is, say, for example, you want to output, he's a fat ass, all right? If it's not, then he's a normal guy, okay? So it's something like that. So in this case, we need to compare the gender of the athlete first, all right? So if the gender of the athlete is male, so equals to male, in double quotation marks, because um, male is actually text alphanumeric, okay? So what I'm going to do is, before putting in the other two if functions, I'm going to output um, compare with male, if true, and if not, I would output compare with female, so that it is easier for us, right? So I'm going to put in a comma. So if the cell here is male, this guy is... Uh, This fellow is a male. If it's not, this fellow is a female. Press enter. So let's look at the results here. Right? Resize this, and I'm going to apply the function. So as you can see, for this, number 10, you will notice that this fellow is a female is um, being displayed, right? Why? Because the gender here is a female. All right, so it shows that our function is actually correct. So if the athlete is a male, what's going to happen is you need to take the best throw distance and compare it with the record distance of the male, which is 90.57, right? So what's going to happen here is I'm going to modify the function so that if it's male, I need to take the best row here and compare it with here, right? So if the best row here is larger than the distance here, then it is a record-breaking throw, right? So I need to output yes for that. So I'm going to modify this portion here. So if the best throw is greater than the male record holding distance, comma, then I want to output yes because it's a record breaking throw. Or else it's a no. All right. So let's check it out. So you notice that for the male side, there are actually outputs of yes and no here already because the function here is actually working. So once you've done this, we're going to work on the female portion, right? So if the best throw is greater this time than the female record holder's distance, we're going to output yes. If not, we're going to output no. There you go. So I'm going to press enter. I'm going to apply this. So you'll notice that all the record breaking values have been changed to either a yes or no. All right. Now I've intentionally left out um, the absolute cell referencing just to show you um, the correct way to actually identify and see whether you need it or not. All right. So everything seems to be in order, but that actually is a mistake. All right. So in order for us to be able to more easily identify it. I'm going to change the orientation to landscape just so that it's easier to compare. Now, I'm going to resize this part as well so that we can. it's easier for us to refer. Okay, so if you look at record breaking here, I'm going to just double click on it. 
Notice that the distance here, the gender here, and the best row here are all selected correctly. Okay, there's no issue with the first row. So let's move on to the second row. Do you see the issue? Right, have a look here. Then you look at the third row, and you notice that the purple and the green um, cell selection actually moves down. Look at the fourth row, it moves down even further. Look at the fifth row, even further. Okay, so looking at this, you have to make sure that you lock the purple and the green cell here. Okay, that is the meaning of absolute cell referencing. So in order for you to perform absolute cell referencing, all right, you need to select that particular cell and you need to press F4. Alright, so once you press F4, it becomes $D, $3. Okay, in Excel, this actually means that this cell has become an absolute cell, which means that even if you drag um, the function and apply it to subsequent cells using the field handler, these two cells will not move. Right, so the next one will be the green cell, right? So B4, I'm going to highlight D4 and perform the same thing, F4. Right, I'm going to use the field handler and I'm going to apply it again. Now look here. First row, no problem. Second row, no problem. Third row, no problem. Fourth, fifth. Right, so we've done uh, what's supposed to be done with um, the nested if, the nested conditional uh, function. Right, so let's move on um, to question 13. Right, it says write align all cells in column D to O inclusive. Okay, this is very simple. D to O, right align. So home, right align. That's it. So I'm going to save it. Moving on. Set the page orientation to landscape. I've done that already. Moving on. 15, save the data model with the following athletes. Okay, this means... You just need to save your Excel workbook as athletes, okay? So what a data model is, this is your data model. So file, save as. Again, save it in your working directory. And call it athletes. And make sure that Excel workbook is selected, all right? Please do not select CSV. If you select CSV, you can go fly kite, okay? Just going to save it. Right, moving on, and it says hide column B to J, right? So, go here, B to J, I'm going to right-click on the column header, and I'm going to select hide. Right, print the spreadsheet showing the formula used. Make sure that the contents of all these cells are visible and that the printout fits on two pages wide. Make sure that the row and column headings are visible when printed. Make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number are printed in the header of the page. So first things first, you need to show formula. Right? So I'm going to go to the formula tab, and I'm going to click show formula. This will show all the functions that you have previously entered. Right, so if you see, if you look here, um, some of the functions cannot really be seen. So just resize your column headers until everything is visible. Right, it also wants the row and column headings to be displayed when it, uh, it's being printed out. So let's go to file and go to print. Now if you look here, the only thing that's displayed here is the Olympic record, the javelin men and women. The reason why is because, um, if you recall, in uh, at the beginning of this paper, you actually use something called the um, print area, right? So we're going to go to print area, and then we're going to clear the print area. All right, this means that I want to print everything on the sheet instead of just a small selection. So I'm going to go to print again. You'll notice that all the data can be seen here. All right. Now, it needs the row and column headers to be displayed, right? So I'm going to go to page setup, moving over to sheet, and I'm going to select row and column headings. So you can see A, K, L, and M selected, and then the row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way. Right? It also says that the width has to fit across two pages. Right? So in order for you to do that, you just need to select the scaling here and select fit all rows on one page. This will actually force the additional columns to go to the next page. 
all right now um, for me I have some issues with the printer but for you guys you just need to manipulate this part in order for it to fill across two pages all right so once you're done just click the print uh, the print button right 18 make all data in columns A to O fully visible so this means that you need to remove the show formula function. Let's go back to formula. And I'm going to uncheck or click the show formula box again. And I'm going to unhide. So the how you unhide is to use the select all function, control A, or you can click on this button. And then double click on any of um, the column header separators here. Right, you'll notice that all the data can be seen now. It says, select only the athletes where the country is Great Britain. In order for you to do that, uh, you need to use the filter function. So, I'm going to highlight all these because these are the column headers. I'm going to go to Home, go to, go to Sort and Filter, and I'm going to select Filter. And then, for me to select um, Great Britain, I need to select ENG. So, under code, I'm going to click here. I'm going to uncheck everything, and I'm only going to select ENG. We can go to country to do the same thing. All right, so ENG, press enter. So these are the athletes that belong to Great Britain. Now, use the athletes' names at average distance that each of these athletes throws the javelin to create a vertical bar chart. All right, so you need to select first the name of the athlete and then um, the average throw. So, athlete, average, right? So in order to multi-select and skip across um, some of the cells, you need to hold, uh, hold down the uh, control key. And then they need a vertical bar chart, right? So I'm going to insert. See this? I'm going to select a 2D column chart. Move this up. There you go. Label this chart with the title British Javelin Throwers. So I'm going to change the label. British. Javelin throwers. It says make sure the category axis labels show the names of the athletes and these are fully visible, right? So if you look at um, the chart here, the X axis is actually the category axis. So as you can see here, it actually shows all the athlete names. So this is fine. So the next question it says print uh, print this chart, save this using the founding chart. So what you need to do is you need to cut the chart, open a new Excel workbook, and paste it in. All right, so I'm going to open a new Excel workbook. New, blank workbook. I'm going to save this inside the working folder. I'm going to call it chart. So I'm just going to cut it. And then I'm going to paste it into the new workbook here. All right, so, and then you need to print it. So file, print. Ah, make sure that your name, candidate number, and center number are printed with this chart. So the same thing, before you print the chart, you need to put in your header and footer. So insert, header and footer. Again, file, print. There you go. So moving on, question 23, open the spreadsheet saved in step 15. You're basically opening the first spreadsheet. I'm going to close the other remaining two because we don't need it anymore. Right. Height column L and M this time. So I'm going to remove um, the previous filter. So there are two ways for you to do it. You can just click here and then select everything, or you can say clear filter from code. All right, so when I click that, all the data will be back. And then it says, um, 
hide column L and M. So I'm just going to highlight these two columns, right click, and then I'm going to hide them again. So format only the cells in rows 6 and 7 so that they are bold, italic, and center aligned. 6 and 7. So 6 and 7. Only the cells in 6 and 7. Bold, italic, and center aligned. So interrogate the data to find all the athletes who have broken the current Olympic record. So in order to find the athletes that have broken the record, Basically, under the record breaking column, you just need to select those that are yes. Very simple. Click here. I'm going to select yes. So these are the people who have actually broken the Olympic record. So sort this data into descending order of gender, then into descending order on the best throw column, showing the values and labels in full except column L and M, which we have hidden. So if you want to do a multi-level sort, all right, you can't just... Um, select the uh, column and then select sort smallest to larger and sort largest to smallest. Okay, to click on the sort and filter button here and select custom sort. Right. So the first sort that you need to work on is descending order of gender. So I'm going to sort by gender, descending order Z to A because that's largest to smallest, and then by best throw. So at level, this is the second level, best throw, Z to A as well. I'm going to click OK. So print this data showing the values. Make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number are printed in the header of the page. So file, print. Just to make sure everything fits within one page, we can again use the scaling option and say, fit sheet on one page. So what's going to happen is it's going to jam all the data into one single page. Right? And I just click print. Right, so we've finished the first part of this um, exam paper, which is um, data analysis. After this, we're going to move on to um, web authoring, which is your HTML as well as CSS. All right, moving on to question 29, create a new folder called web11n in your working area, in your work area. So I'm going to create a folder web11n. So just right click new folder web11n and then you need to download all these files and put it into the folder. Now I'm not going to do it. Reason being because I'm lazy. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Open the image n1bg5.jpg in a suitable application. You will manipulate this image to create the background image, which will be used in a style sheet. La la la. Resize the image so that it is 800 pixels wide and maintain its aspect ratio. Take a screenshot to show how you resize the image. Place this in the evidence document you created in step one. So um, we're going to use uh, paint to open this, and then we're going to resize it. So n1bg5.jpg so n1bg5 I'm going to right click open with paint no idea what this is so you need to resize it to 800 pixels wide maintaining aspect ratio and you need to create a screenshot uh, create a screenshot and save it into the evidence document so resize In pixels, I'm going to switch over to pixels, horizontally, 800. All right, so you need to uh, take a screenshot of this. Um, for those of you using Windows, uh, just click the print screen button. I am going to select print screen from here. All right, I'm going to open Microsoft Word, your evidence document that you created way before this, and I'm going to paste it in. So this is evidence that you actually resized it. Right, so it says save it as n1bg6. I'm going to click OK. File. Save as. I'm going to save it into the working folder. n1bg6 this time. Save it. Now, again, reduce the image resolution if necessary to ensure that the stored image is no larger than 50 
kilobytes. So save the image as n1bg7.jpg in your web 11m folder. So this particular image, if you look here, the size is 66.5, right? So it needs um, you to reduce it so that it is no larger, which means that it is lesser or equals to 50 kilobytes. So I'm going to resize it. So this time I'm going to look at the percentage. So if the horizontal and the vertical width at 100% yields 66.5. In order for you to get 50, I would say that I need to resize it by, say, 80%. Reduce it by 80%. We'll click OK. And I'm going to save it. Show screenshot evidence of the file size of these images in your evidence document. So there should be a before and after. So before you save, it's 66.5, right? So I'm going to, again, Create a screenshot for you guys. Print screen button. I'm going to type a before. Paste it here. And then I'm going to save it as N1BG7. N1BG7. Right? Notice that the file size actually becomes 53.3. Let's see. So I need to resize it even more, right? So instead of 80%, I would say that perhaps you guys should put 70. So for me, I'm going to resize it again, but this time I'm going to put 90%. I'm going to save it again. Oops. Right, and this time the size is lesser than 50 kilobytes, right? So again, you need to take a screenshot of this to prove that the file size has been reduced and it has been saved under a different file name. Right? So again, for you guys, print screen on your keyboard. For me, after, paste it in. So before it is 65.5, after it is 47.7. No, right, there you go. So moving on. 33, open the image n1swim.gif in a suitable application. So, I'm going to close it. n1swim. Again, I'm going to open it in paint. Let's paint. Oh, goodness. Okay. Paint. No, so flip the image so that a swimmer faces the right side of the page. Save this image as n1swim2.jpg in your web 11n folder. So, you got to flip it, right? So, rotate. Flip horizontal. Right, so, it faces the right-hand side now. So, I'm going to save as... Swim 2. Then I'm going to close it. So, moving on. Using a suitable software package, open the file n1javelin.htm. Suitable package meaning um, Microsoft Expression Web. So, n1javelin.html. This file. So, I'm going to open with Microsoft Expression Web, or you can just say edit with Microsoft Expression Web. Both work. Now, look, it says n1style6.css has been attached to the web page already, but may not be the most appropriate. Now, these style sheets are available for you to use. They are n1style6, 7, 8. Nine. Select the most appropriate style sheet and attach it to the web page. If necessary, resize your browser so that background image fits. Right. So, um, we need to preview um, the website and see how it looks like. Now, if you look at this color, and you see that the attached style sheet is actually n one style six .css, right? You will notice that um, the color used for the text um, and the color for the background does not. Um, contribute to a very very nice viewing experience right 
In other words, it sucks, right? So we're going to try out and run style 6.css instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this style sheet, right? So I'm going to remove the link. You should not delete this style sheet link, yes. Then I'm going to attach a new style sheet. So attach style sheet. I'm going to go to browse, going back to my working folder, and I'm going to select um, 7. I'm going to click OK. This is even worse. The text, the text is too big. It takes a lot of time to just scroll through. So this is not the suitable one. I'm going to remove the link again. Let's try 7 this time. Oh, sorry. Um, 8. This is not too bad. Let's look at 9. Nah. Right, so we're going to roll back to um, 8. All right. So click Attach Style Sheet. Basically, you're actually attaching the CSS file and the styles that the CSS file has uh, to your HTML file. Now, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and it is um, used in all commercial websites, uh, sorry, web pages, um, to manipulate elements, to you know change the colors, the positioning, and um, some of them even uh, apply some sort of animation and all that. All right, so I'm going to browse. I'm going to select number 8, which is the most suitable here. All right, I'm going to save it. So replace the text candidate name, center number, and candidate number with your name, center number, and candidate number. Simple. Candidate name, center number, and candidate number. Save. Change the uh, HTML so that the image n one javelinjpg is 80 pixels wide and maintains its aspect ratio. So right click, I'm going to go to picture properties, appearance, and size. I'm going to specify the size, it says 80 pixels wide. So I'm going to change the width to 80, make sure in pixels is selected, press OK. This is what you'll get. Save it. Moving on. Set the cell padding in the middle table to 4 pixels. Middle table. Right, so in order to identify which table belongs to which table, because if you look here, there are actually three tables. There's one table, two, and three. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the cells here. Right, notice it changes to table. So this is the first table. I'm going to highlight this. The second table pops out. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to table properties here. Right, it says cell padding in the middle table to 4, cell spacing in the middle table to 4. So padding, the distance in between the different cells, spacing the distance inside the cell. So 4 by 4. I'm going to press OK. Save it. Right, um, question 42, it says select from the web 11 and folder the most appropriate images to replace the words in the bottom table, archery, athletics, cycling, fencing. Right, so basically what it wants you to do is to replace all these with the correct images. All right, so let's have a look here. So I'm just going to replace this, remove this. And I'm going to insert, right, picture from file. And then I'm going to change so that I can actually look at the icons here. So the first one is archery, so I'm going to select this one. No alternate text and no description. I'm going to select OK. Athletics, I'm going to remove this as well. Insert, picture from file, athletics, athletics, athletics this one All right cycling cycling 
cycling and fencing. Right, make sure that each image placed in step 42 is 50 pixels high and that it maintains its aspect ratio. So you're going to right click, picture properties, appearance, height is 50, that's fine, it's height is 50, 50, this doesn't look like it. So right click, picture properties, again appearance, height is 50, obviously. So create a hyperlink from the text. Click here to point to the website. There, there we should open in a new window called underscore hothouse web. So I'm going to be a lazy fella. I'm going to copy this. Click here. That opens in a new window. So click here. So we're going to create a hyperlink here, right? So I'm going to right click, hyperlink. So it wants it to open in a new page and the web address Okay, that because um, the question actually gives you a web address, so you need to select existing file or web page. If it says an email, you need to select email address. All right, so I'm going to paste whatever I have here, and then it says open in a new window called underscore hothouse web. All right, so target frame in a new window underscore hothouse web. Press OK. I'm going to save it. Right, moving on. Create a hyperlink from the image n1swim2.jpg uh, JPG to point to the web page named n1swim1.htm, which should open in the current window. Swim2.jpg. I think it's this one. Okay, so. Um, Did I leave out a question? Mm. I may have left one question out. But anyway, this should be N1 Swim 2. Right, that I have saved in the web 11 folder. Right, so I'm just going to change this um, picture properties. Right, the one that we changed the direction of the swimmer. All right, so I'm going to right click again. I'm going to insert a hyperlink for the image and then to point to the web page name n1swim1.htm. So to point to the web page, again, existing file or web page, and one swim one. Right? So it doesn't say that which should open in the current window, so you don't need to select any target frames here. I'm just going to click OK. Save it. Moving on to the next question. Save the web page as n1javelin1.htm. So I'm going to save as n1javelin1. Dot HDM. and it says print a copy of the HTML source. So I'm going to go to file, print, and before I print, there are actually two things to look at. All right, so this is not the HTML source. This is actually uh, the web page. All right, so if you look at question forty. Um, 46 it says open this page in your web browser print screenshot evidence of this page um, This is basically what you will see based on the code that you have so I'm going to switch from design to code So this is your HTML source, right? So before I print first things first I need to change it over to code and then I need to make sure my name center number and candidate number appears All right now however in this question you already inserted your name, center number, and candidate number here. Okay, but in case the printout of your HTML source code actually overflows to the second page, um, you, you still need your header, and, uh, your center number, candidate number, as well as um, your candidate name to appear at the top or the bottom of every single page. So I'm going to go to File, 
print, and I'm going to go to page setup. All right, so header or footer, you can choose where you want to put it. I'm going to put it in the header. So, mm, oops, six nine six nine. I'm going to go to file print. I'm just going to go to print preview. All right, so as you can see here, my name, center number, and candidate number appears at the top of every single page, right? And we do have two pages. So please remember to do this. All right, now, open this page in your web browser, print screenshot evidence of this page. You may use more than one printer to make sure that the entire page is visible. So I'm going to open the uh, web page here. I'm going to open it with Chrome. Going to do a screenshot again for you guys. Print screen. Again, in your evidence document, press enter and then we're going to paste it here. Right, save and print. Oops, my bad. Open this page. You may use more than one printout. No, we don't need that. For the 47, save and print the document you call evidence in step number one. So, all the stuff that you have done throughout the exam, file, print, click on the print button here. So, make sure that your name, center number, and candidate number appears at the top or bottom, depending on the question, of every single page. Right, so we're done. Now, those of you sitting for IGCSE, ICT, make sure that after the exam, all right, um, follow the instructions here to highlight whatever you need to highlight. All right, guys? Thank you very much.